And we are back for another beautiful day. We got eight tenths of rain last night, so we are not able to plant corn today, but I'm not complaining because that stuff is growing. Hey everybody, you're watching Call the Corn Star. If you're even slightly interested in farming or just want to watch a 25 year old farmer get some stuff done, you're in the right place. So the cooling bin still has beans in it with the nice rotten situation going on there. It's too wet to get over there, so we're not gonna be able to do that. We're not gonna be able to plant today because it's too wet. But first things first, we need to hop in the black truck, take the skid loader, over to the cemetery. Then I got a grave to dig. This is one of my favorite cemeteries because it has this concrete driveway on the inside of it and it's like the only area around my house that has any concrete. So I'd always bring my four wheeler here when I was a little kid so I could practice wheelies on the concrete. But this is also the cemetery that my great grandmother, my great grandfather and my grandfather are buried. I think I'm gonna have to lose a sweatshirt today. It's warmer than I thought. By the way, check out the link in the description. Pick out the new Corn Star Farm sweatshirts. These things are really cool. My absolute favorite ones, so. Links in the description. Dad said it was in the first or the second driveway. That's second driveway. This is the first driveway. We're just looking for a flag stuck in the ground. That's where we're gonna be digging. Sometimes you come to the cemetery and the cemetery marker said, yep, I got it flagged really well. And then you go up there and there's a flag and it's like this tall and it's half bent over and barely above the ground and it's sitting like by a bunch of flowers and stuff. So you can't see it. Looks like we have a few graves at this cemetery that when we're covering this one that we're digging today, we should probably touch them up. There's some spots that have been kind of sinking over the winter time. They settle out. We'll get some grass seed thrown on them. Say hi to Grandpa Ray real quick. This is Grandpa Ray's stone. I wish you guys could have met my Grandpa Ray. If you took Cooper, me, and my dad and you put that together into one person, that would have been my Grandpa Ray. The, the quietness, the liking to deal with numbers and dive into projects and get really creative. I got that side of him. The just the, the nice, kind, gentleness of a human being. Dad has that. And then just the mechanical ability and just like funny awkwardness, or not really awkward, but like a, not caring what anybody thinks whatsoever and just doing your own thing and just figuring stuff out. I'm like, that's Cooper. Now apparently at this cemetery, somewhere in this older part, there's a stone that has a secret compartment on it because during the prohibition, people would come out here to pick up their goods hidden inside that stone. I don't know which one it is, but we're gonna try to find it. I honestly can say I've never walked around up here before. These are some pretty cool stones. Wow, look at the intricacy on that. Is that metal? No way. You take one like this, that thing it probably weighs 2,000 pounds. They would have brought it out here with horses. How would they have lifted that up there? Wow, I've never noticed this one before. It's a tree. Incredible. That is the coolest stone I've ever seen in my life. I feel like it's got to be inside of one of these metal ones like this. Like this one doesn't have a name on it. It just sounds hollow inside of there. Plus it's right off the driveway. So that, if I had to guess, I'd say it'd be right here. But that's pretty rusted in there. You're being told you're looking for a flag. Would you perceive that to be a flag? No. <laughs> this isn't a flag. This is an arrow. <laughs> the broadhead on it. Hey, question. The other day, Monty rolled in and he said there was a stone somewhere up on top of the hill that has like a hidden door inside of it. Do you know which one that is or have you ever heard of that? to be careful not to veer that way. There's a vault right on the edge of the bucket on this side, and then there's another one right on the edge of the bucket of this side. Uh, we probably have less than an inch of clearance on both sides to get in here and dig, so it's gonna be very tight. It's kind of funny, my entire life growing up, people would ask, hey, what'd you do last night? Or what'd you do this weekend? I'd be like, oh, I dug a grave with my dad and grandpa. I never thought anything of it, because it's, it's a way of life for us. You know, we've dug graves literally my entire life. We've been digging graves. So since I was a little boy, you're out here helping dig graves. Just normal. I just thought, yeah, everybody digs graves, you know. And then once I started getting older, then you started getting looks from people. And, and then you realized, oh, that's not that common. And they probably think I'm weird now. So I just told them not to mess with me because I dig graves for a living. 
You haven't had any problems yet. This one I accidentally broke the tail off a little bit, but the different ones, I've, they're about all like this. Make the most out of a rainy day. I ended up making some programs inside of the, I took a Google Maps picture, and then I'm labeling out all the areas of how all the different trials are gonna go inside of the fields. So all the green areas are gonna be like my full trial, and then all the spots that aren't green, those are gonna be my controls, and then that's the whole plot behind the house and stuff. So it's gonna be very interesting to see. This way we'll have an apples to apples comparison of everything going on here. And then I got this done for every single field and I've also been putting together a list of all the different products I wanna to try to address the different needs that I'm trying to address on the, this side's corn and then we have soybeans. I'm still working on it. I'm waiting for a couple phone calls back from a few people. There's just a lot of information here. In the farming world, for whatever reason, people seem to think that we cannot actually influence that much of a change of yield. Kind of what we get is what we get, and that is strictly dependence on the weather. Now, the weather is a large part of the potential of the yield, but on a bad weather year, there are still people who yield better than others, and there's also parts of the fields that yield better than others, regardless of the year. So obviously, there's something different going on in one part of a field versus another, or from one farmer's farm, to another. So I'm just trying to look at our farms, finding, hey, what's going on in these best areas, and then trying to replicate that across onto the areas that are not doing as good. So that comes in the form of applying different things on the soil, applying different things on the plants, and then being able to measure those through different tests so that way we can actually see what we are changing and what we're doing. And then we have a goal to strive for based off those high areas so we know where we need to be getting our finish line to. And then once we get there, then hopefully everything should be doing well. If it does, then we know we figured something out. If we can replicate it, we know we really figured something out. And then we're just gonna keep doing that and just continually pushing the envelope forward. But it's a process, it takes time, it takes a ton of effort, and oftentimes it's expensive and it's a lot of risk going out there because most people, frankly, aren't doing it. And there's no roadmap. And the guys that are, a lot of them don't really share what they're doing, so. I guess that's the importance of finding a good group of people who share what they're doing to allow everybody to kind of navigate through minefields, but that can be challenging to find. So there's just a lot of pioneering you have to do. And also there's just a factor of, hey, sometimes you have to put in that work to just get a basic understanding of what's going on and then get into the little specifics. And you take a thousand little specifics and put them into one and all of a sudden that's one really big giant specific that makes all the difference in the world. Welcome to farming. We ended up getting two shots of rain. One was about seven tenths of an inch and the other one was about an inch. So we got some nice puddling action going on. Definitely too wet to be out in the field. They're talking dry for the next few days which should let us get back out into the field and we need to boogie and get that done because after those few days of dry they're talking several days of rain. We would really like to get our corn in the ground by then so that way we're not getting towards the later end of planting our corn or later than we'd like it to be planted. So while it's too wet today, we're gonna to try to get a bunch of stuff lined together. So that way, once it is ready to go, we're not messing around with this rinky dink stuff that just takes time. We can just get out in the planters and we can go. Ooh, I need to bring the lawnmower back here. And right there, wow, I'm getting tall. First up on that list, both of the sprayers right now have bean chemical inside of them and on them. And we do not wanna put bean chemistry on corn chemistry, we're gonna be spraying our corn next. Actually, the intercrop plot is going to have a different chemical on it than what's on a regular corn ground because it has corn and beans inside of it, so we have to spray a chemistry that corn can handle and soybeans can handle. So regardless, we need to get the sprayers cleaned out inside of tanks, inside of booms, outside of shells, get it all cleaned up, and then so once it dries up, we can just fill it up with that chemical and go. Oh, and washing the sprayer is the absolute most fun thing in the world to do, and you definitely don't get wet doing it. I don't know why the sprayer does this. You turn the key about 10 times and it goes. How did birds already make a nest right there? Are you kidding me? How about we take the brand new set of pliers out of the sprayer? Not a good environment for those. Yeah, what are you doing? Come on up. Come on. Come on, climb the ladder. Here. Hey, come on. Come here. Come here. This is a little windy out. We're just gonna do the old soapy soapy old car method. This might work a little better. We're gonna try it. Oh. This sprayer only has the one filter right here, so we'll just take that off. That'll drain all the lines inside the pumps and everything. We already have rinsed the main tank and we've also rinsed the boom. We've rinsed this line. 
So really just cleaning out that filter, making sure everything's clean. If there is any residue up inside the pumps and stuff, we'll get that out of there. Our other one's got some inline filters right here. There's five of them, but this sprayer doesn't have it. Nothing too crazy on the filter, just a couple little bugs basically is what it looks like. We've had some nice heat, wind's been blowing. I think the ground's gonna be dry enough. We're gonna go hop in the gator. We're gonna go finish mapping the fields that have not been mapped yet. And then hopefully later tonight, we'll be able to get this sprayer washed up. Oh, maybe while I park you here, Dad, will wanna wash it for me. Out, we'll check for overhead lines. We are good, okay, out again. Get ready for all the water to dump out of there. Look at that, gross. The lift cylinders on this sprayer are starting to get pretty bad leaks inside of them. So if you let the boom sit for really any period of time at all, it settles out and it goes all the way to the bottom. So we need to make sure that it can lower all the way to the ground here without hitting anything. Otherwise, we're gonna come back with a boom on top of a car. Keys are in it when they come back and better rewash things. It will be. There's a pin here. I don't know what to do. Last time I greased it, I had one that gave me trouble. This back one here. So I took the bolt out and everything to get it, you know, apart. And then I finally got it to take because they, you know, should spooky grease out. Well, this one I couldn't get it to take last time, so I had all spurt oil in every so often. And. You know, it, it pumps in there and it's like, dun, dun, and it gets full. And I took the circuit out now and you stick the screwdriver in there and, you know, there's oil, grease in there. But I can't, you know, it just locks up after a while. So I'm trying to figure out how to get that pin or whatever because it should spooey out of that one too. I know, I, I've always had a hard time with that particular one as well. Yeah. It seemed like every time Cooper came around, then it just took. I mean, like I told Cooper over time, if we don't get grease in it, it's going to. Yeah, it's gonna wear it out. Be shot in there. And I did change oil and had 131 hours on it, which the book says go 250, but to me that seems like an awful long time. I know, it seems almost like a conflict of interest there. When they tell you to go that long and they also want you to buy new machines. To me, at 150 hours or something's probably plenty on it. It's a three and a half gallon tank on it. I suppose it depends what you're doing with it, but you know, for like us. Sure. Don't forget, don't scratch the paint. Please. I guess, might as well start with the field around the house. Never mind, never mind, never mind. What's that? So when I pulled out to the end of the driveway, just about ready to start outlining the field around dad's house, I decided to pop onto the GPS information and I look at my receiver, I see RTK unlocked. So we are on RTK. And then I went up into this and I was looking at my receiver, my GPS 7500, and it was on that was. I'm like, wait a second, let's go to Terrastar X, which is RTK. And then a thing pops up saying my Terrastar X subscription has expired. So that means the first time I did this, I was on WAS. I redid our fields again, besides five of them. And I thought I was on RTK, but I was on WAS. <laughs> now I gotta get my RTK subscription renewed. <laughs> and then we have to redo everything again. <laughs> okay, we just got a hold of Pete Young Blunt. Look at that. We're running Terrastar X. That is RTK. 1.1 inch accuracy. Okay, let's do this again. <sighs> oh, the old painful part. Bye bye, field. Start a new one. Hanson Farm's all done. This thing is going to be a thing of beauty because all you got to do is outline it once on the main part and then uh, back and forth on each end. Then we can literally plant from this gravel road right over there all the way to the other gravel road east and west back and forth through the entire thing that is going to be so nice before that was its own part up there the middle was its own part that was its own part that was kind of its own part this was its own part so basically you had like five fields in one now it's one field in one next up we got the bush farm Oh, it's always so painful. Cooper's cutting some metal, making a thing for our post hole digger here. We have a thing that'll go on the skid loader that'll go around and around, and we can take bob wire off of fences, stick it in there, turn on the post hole digger, and it will wind it up. And then when they want to take it apart, somehow this comes apart. heavy we got the field around dad's done there's a lot of little intricate detail in this one got the terraces in the top corner 
And then that's new waterway right there. That little piece also is new. Wee, man, it's nice and clean in here. You can go to Van Walls and pick something up like that. Free after midnight. After midnight, they're cheaper. Just got get that little cord thing that they wrap around this. You just have to figure out how to disconnect that without sending the alarm off, then you're good to go.